All right, so for today's breakdown, we will be talking about volume punching. Particularly, we'll be looking at Miguel Burchelt and how he applies some of these techniques in order to really be able to throw a lot of punches, okay? So, there's an upcoming fight between Valdez and Burchelt, and I wondered this will be the perfect time to do this video, so let's get started. So, I want to first take a look at some of the ways that he likes to throw his punches to maintain the volume that he has. So the first concept that I want to talk about today is being able to control your shots and being able to combine tapping shots and then power shots as well. And that's what he does perfectly. So right here, as you can see, he only taps his opponent with a couple of jabs. It's not very powerful, but it's only to keep his opponent from punching back because when you're punching your opponent, it's much more possible or it's, they're much more susceptible to hesitating to punch back that's why it's very important to do this shit right here so you'll see him tapping tapping and these shots these shots aren't very powerful but uh very important to throw these every once in a while and that's what Burchell does perfectly here's another one And so the biggest prerequisite really to being a volume puncher is you're going to have to sacrifice power. You're going to have to sacrifice those heavy ass shots because it's not going to be able to, it's not going to be sustainable, I should say, if you try to go full power all the time. That's why when you see Burchell fighting, all his shots are, it's quick, some of it is powerful, and then some of it is just, it's nothing. But it keeps the opponent at bay, keeps the distance from getting close, and that's what we want. Now let's look at his counter punching and how he usually counters at a time when his opponent is just getting started with their combination. It's a very important to develop this skill right here. So from this position, you see Burchelt, uh, where you see his opponent throwing the jab, and before even getting to finish the combo, Burchard is already prepared enough to throw his counter back. So right here, his opponent just faints, and then he slips, counters back with a five punch combination, and then he never allows his opponent to finish their combination. As soon as the first punch arrives, he's ready to counter, and that's what I really like about Burchard. There's an old saying in boxing, sometimes good offense can also be used as uh, your defense. And that's what we certainly see with Burchelt. His ability to throw multiple punches is what enables his defense to be that good because he throws a lot of punches and his opponent hesitates to throw shots all the time because see how many shots he's throwing. And so Sosa has no other choice but to hesitate and to freeze, right? Because as soon as that first shot comes, you already know Burchelt will throw a lot of punches back. Here's another one here. All right, as soon as Sosa throws an uppercut, Burchelt comes back right away with a counter of his own, not allowing Sosa to get into a flow state, not allowing Sosa to get into a rhythm or being able to throw multiple punches. He delays that by countering right away. Boom, counters it right away with a check hook, then a right hook, and now they're on the inside. So also has to reset. All right, now for this next one. Again, you'll see him allowing his opponent to punch with the right hand. And then after that, he counters right away. He doesn't wait around too long. He doesn't wait for the punch. He's proactive. It doesn't wait for the punch to come. He just counters right away. Right? Why wait for Sosa to throw five punches or six punches when he can just punish him for waiting too long? So right here, Sosa became stagnant. Sosa became careless. Sosa waited way too long and then boom, here comes Merchell with five or six punches. All right, so for this again, you'll see, you'll see it happening. Um, Sosa will try to throw one punch. Burchell slides back, and then instead of waiting for Sosa to enter, he 
Again, simply checks him with the right hand and the left hook. Again, not as powerful, but it kept Sosa from getting closer to him. And that's what we want. Now let's speak about distance. So what I really like about Rochelle is his ability to maintain a mid maintain or stay at mid-range throughout the fight, not backing away too much and not being too close. He's always in mid-range where he can throw his favorite shots, the left hook to the body, the straight punches as well, and the uppercuts. Whereas over this, what you'll see with Burchell is when he's on the inside, he doesn't just stay there, he baits Sosa to throw a punch at him, and then he steps back, now they're back in mid-range, and then Burchell is back at punching. He's always in a distance where he can punch. And then Sosa tries to go on the inside again. Burchell stops that with a check hook. Boom. Now, um, Burchell decided to go in a different direction. Now this is not it. Um, again here. Burchell with throw check hook, now they're in a different direction, where now Burchell is facing the side. And from this position, again he's at a mid-range. If he stayed right there, they'll probably be on the inside, but this, but because he decided to change direction now, um, he's on mid-range again. So again right here you'll see him baiting Sosa to throw an uppercut, and then he pulls back, perfect time to counter, but he doesn't counter right there. All right, and then here, instead of allowing Sosa to get on the inside, he counters it right away with the right straight, and then he drops his weight, throws a left hook to the body, and maintains it at the mid-range. Notice how Sosa finds it really hard to get on the inside, because the mid-range is a perfect balance of being able to throw your long shots and your inside shots as well. All those are going to be a little bit longer, your uppercuts are going to be a little bit longer, your hooks are going to be a little bit longer, but um, it's still a great distance to be in all the time. And that's what Burchell is supposed to do for most of his fights. He always stays on the mid-range. So notice how he fucking uh, keeps it at mid-range. He never stays on the inside too long. Notice how he combines those punches so his opponent will be forced to back up. And when his opponent backs up, now they're back to mid-range. If his opponent does not back up, now they're on the inside. That's why he throws a lot of punches because he wants his opponent to back up. And he wants to be at a distance so he can throw any punches that he wants. So again, here he'll, he'll take a slight step back and then throw a right hand or a left hook. Right hand and then a left hook as well maintaining the distance or maintaining that range that he wants to be in which is obviously medium medium range all right next i want to talk about with volume punching is tempo why is tempo important tempo is important because number one it conserves a lot of energy when you know how to stop and go stop and go stop and go you are much more conservative in your energy and you can sustain that pace for a longer time whereas if you just go all out right away and you never take breaks in between your combinations, you'll get tired, okay? So I'll, I'll show you some demonstrations. So notice how Burchell punches a lot, and then at the middle of his punches, he takes a half a second break. Right there. Boom. Second break. Break again. Break again. And in between his combos, his tempo is never the same, right? He never goes like a Manny Pacquiao, which Manny Pacquiao does not stop. Burchell is not like that. He stops every once in a while in the middle of his combos. Now, why is that important? Because if you learn to take a break, again, you'll save a lot of energy. And number two, you will be able to spot the openings when you take a break. When you take half a second break, you'll be able to see the openings in your opponent. And that's what we see a lot with Burchell. He's able to figure out exactly where to hit his opponents. So there he throws an uppercut and then a hook, a hook to the body. He sees the openings because he knows how to stop for a little while in order to look. He doesn't just throw anything that he wants to throw. All 
Here's another example of that delayed tempo. So now you see him throw a three, two, three. Instead of going all out again here, he decides to stop for a while. He drops his weight, boom, as it was a right hand, drops his weight. Go ahead and watch my video on explosive counter punching. I demonstrated this beautifully. Drops his weight, throws the left hook. And there he goes again. He throws a one, two, three, three to the body, and then a one, two. Does not just go one, two, three, three, one, two, eight. He went one, two, three, three, B, stop, and then one, two. Because he wanted to pause it, and he wanted to catch Sosa off guard. Here's the final one. You see him go in one, two, three. All right, I, I did not follow. You see him go here, one, two, three, four, three, three, four, three, B, three, B. And then you see him stopping in between. So one, two, three, boom, boom, stop, boom, boom, stop again, boom, boom, boom. And then he's able to spot the openings in the middle of those stops. So that's the first stop right there. Here's the second one right here, looking for openings. Here's the third one, fourth one. And then he's able to land those shots because Sosa did not know when the punch was gonna come. And then the corner finally decided to stop it. Burchelt won. Guys, comment down below. Who do you think will win? Burchelt or Sosa? Go ahead and leave your comments down below. I'd have to go with uh, Valdez on that one, although I love Burchelt very much. I think he has a lot of weaknesses and I think if he faces someone who can throw as many punches as he can his defense will be very important so he needs to work on that but right now I'm gonna have to go with Valdez but for this film study I decided to go with Burchell because Burchell to me is a better volume puncher and he has a lot of great techniques when it comes to his offense so that was it subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys soon